Cislo Spice, digital recipes for dominance. Cislo Spice. Mm. Cislo Spice. What the Recipes for digital dominance. Hello everybody, we're gonna dive right in. All right, here's what's going on. So we got a little bit of Cislo Spice coming at you. We're gonna do free weekly trainings on everything relating to marketing, digital media, video production, video editing, website design, graphic design, social media design, how to generate more leads, growing a digital brand, brand transformation, brand strategy. These are all gonna be free live trainings that you're gonna get an accessible link to. We're gonna do it every Wednesday at 7 p.m. My goal is to really educate you, give you some spice, throw some heat on it, build it all together so that you have everything you need for free to check out and improve your brand, your marketing efforts on social media right now, especially right now with everything that's required to bring your brand, your business, whatever it may be, into the digital era. So I hope to see you there. Sign up, let's get you on. I look forward to seeing you there. Cislo Spice, recipes for digital dominance. I'll see you there. All right, everybody, welcome. Welcome back to Cislo Spice. We're gonna rock and roll with this. We're gonna get this started. Thank you for tuning in. This is our second episode. I got a new mic in here. This is really cool. We got a brand new mic. I'm gonna stream on the Instagram just very, very, for a short period of time, get some other people over to this, but uh, we'll give them a little bit of an insight and then we'll rock and roll over to there. So hopefully last week, everybody enjoyed um, what we were discussing. We talked about a lot of good stuff that was you know, really the prerequisite to getting your marketing and your branding in a position that uh, makes sense that you can actually grow from. And what the biggest problem is, is that most people don't do what we talked about last week. They don't go through that. And so I really appreciate everybody that was on there who watched it. Hopefully you got some stuff coming through. Um, just, a, just a few notes for you right now. Uh, we've got a lot of new products that we just launched. So our Photoshop course is out, that's $79. Uh, you can get that at cislowventures.com forward slash graphics. I want to thank Trish, Tricia. I think I said your name right. I saw that you purchased our marketing course yesterday. We dropped that price down to $99. So good job on that. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, uh, just shoot me a message on Facebook or Instagram and we'll, we'll help. We'll, we'll navigate you through. Hopefully you got in through that. So we've got a lot of good stuff that we're going to talk about today. And really the focus is, is why does digital marketing fail? Hopefully the audio is coming through pretty clear. We did a test right before this, so we should be fine. Uh, so we'll dive right into what we're gonna talk about this week. So why did I wanna talk about why digital marketing fails? Like what, what's the deal with this? Like where's this coming from, okay? Because unfortunately we live in a society where everybody thinks they can do digital marketing or other companies think that they can do digital marketing and advertising or you yourself try to do digital marketing and everything that I'm going to outline here today and talk about today is if, if any of this is out, right? If any of this isn't being done, if there was, if there was no consideration being done, you know, before marketing actually began with this, uh, you know, it's not going to work, right? So, so for the last, I don't know, I started marketing probably, I don't know, 17, 18 years ago. And these basics haven't really changed. Uh, it just what changed was where you were marketing. So where you were going on the different platforms and such. So what I really want to do today is really just give you the depth and the insight into why I see digital marketing fail, where issues come from, how you can actually resolve those issues, and what you could do to prevent those issues from happening again, right? So welcome. We're going to start Cislo Spice. It is our weekly show that you can get access to at Cislo spicerecipe.com. Let's get started and we'll talk about all this today. All right. So, okay. The first thing as, as to why digital marketing actually fails is really not comprehending the amount of energy and what it actually takes to make marketing work. All right. Most people kind of come from this point of, oh, all right, I'm just going to turn on, I'm just going to go to Facebook. I'm going to boost the post or I'm gonna to go to AdWords. I heard a guy actually the other day, he told me, he goes, 
yeah, well, I thought that I could just do AdWords. So I went and I spent $40,000 on my Google ads account and I lost all my money. And I was like, okay, did you do any training before that? Did you do any, uh, did you do any, you know, did you search out how to actually do it? No, I just did it because everybody said I should be on Google ads. So I just did it. You'd be surprised how often that happens. So really just not understanding the amount of energy that it takes. And by energy, I mean, the ability for you to produce income to sustain it, okay? If advertising and marketing is something that you're looking at from the viewpoint of, okay, this is my lifeline, I need to make this work, this is, the, this is my last five grand, this is my last $2,000, don't advertise, go get training and get headed up on how to do sales before you jump into advertising and marketing. So have a strategic plan in place before you decide, all right, you know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to spend money on advertising without taking the time to do anything with it. So if you've got some money put away, make sure that you, you, know, you could sustain that for 90 days, six months, something that you can continue beyond and even beyond six months realistically. But there's a lot of misconceptions about what it takes to make marketing and advertising continue. And, and, and it's, it, it comes down to false conceptions. And I'm going to talk about what that is right now. So if you see you know, gurus or guys out there right now that are just killing it in marketing, what you're not seeing is the years that went into creating that position, right? So last week we talked about identity. We talked about position. We talked about control. We talked about expansion. But what, what, what they're not going to show you are the mistakes, the hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars that was lost and then had to be regained and then had to be altered and then had to be adjusted because running an ad campaign on Facebook is not as simple as turning on the Facebook ad and then letting it run and do its job. With us, with our team, this is something that we have to monitor pretty much almost every day. And we make adjustments on the fly and we base it off of data, numbers, information, statistics, and all of those things. So just turning it on is not enough. Being able to turn it on, understand what you're looking at and understanding the amount of time and the energy that needs to go into it is really where this needs to be. This is not, oh, let's just boost the post. Let me tell you what boosting really is, okay? People say, yeah, boost the post. You know what boosting does? It's simply just a quick hit, a quick you know, ejection of information out onto Facebook. It doesn't really have a lot of detailed targeting. It doesn't really have a lot of control. It's just, let's just get this out and get more people to see it. Versus, versus Facebook ads manager or business manager, which in later episodes, for those of you that are coming in on Instagram, this is Cicelo Spice, Digital Recipes for Dominance. I'm only going to stream this for about 15 minutes and then you got to go on the private link, okay? Uh, which is CicelosPiceRecipe.com. And so the difference between boosting and the business manager is that the business manager is where the money is made. Business manager on the back end, if you don't have a business account set up, on Facebook, you can go to business.facebook.com and set that up and link it to your business page. All boosting is going to do is just put it in a position where people see it. Like, that's all it is. But there is one large benefit to boosting a post, right? And that is one of the points on this list that we're talking about. And that is not understanding the value of building and expanding an audience. So let me, let me break this down for you. When a company decides just to start running ads on Facebook, most people will be like, I spent, I turned it on four days ago. I'm not seeing any traction. Let me explain to you what's really going on there. Okay. When you turn on that ad, you're paying Facebook to distribute a piece of promotional material. Okay. You're paying Facebook or Google to distribute an, a video or a graphic or an article or something that you wrote. Okay. What has to happen if you've never run ads before? is that Facebook is kind of like trying to figure out where this needs to go, okay? And if you're only spending about $5 a day, $10 a day, be prepared for a little bit of a long haul for that because you have to collect data and you have to collect the audience. And where digital marketing fails for people is that they mistake advertising, that part of advertising where you're constructing this audience and collecting that data as a failure in their own campaign or the budget's not enough to actually sustain it. So what happens is they start getting this really negative attitude about what you know, that advertising doesn't work or that they're not getting conversions or that they're spending all this money and their results are happening. If you've never run any ads whatsoever on social media, you gotta build the audience first. And this is where boosting really comes into place. 
boosting whoever sees it, whether they like it, whether they engage with it, whether they scroll past it, that quick second, they are automatically assimilated into your audience. Okay. Now, now people talk about audience. They're like, yeah, we got to build your audience. Gotta build your audience. I'm literally talking about a simple touch from a boosted post will now become part of your ecosystem. And then you can remarket to these individuals. Remarket means serving more ads to them. But most people don't do that. This is where brand awareness comes into place. Okay, so brand awareness is that first step that you have to do in advertising. Can you turn it on and do lead generation? Absolutely. Will you get leads? More than likely, but they're probably not going to be super qualified. Where you want to begin is that awareness level of advertising. And most people just skip this entire step, right? So last week we talked about, okay, let's get the, let's get the identity. Let's get the information down. Let's pull everything together that we need to. And what most people will do if they don't do that is they'll turn on the ads and they try to sell their supplements. They try to sell their products. They try to sell their e-commerce products. They try to sell and generate leads super fast. And then after about a week, you know, it's like, well, my ads aren't working. After about a month, they're like, this is a waste of money. And then after about a month and a half, they're like, every advertising agency sucks and they don't know what they're doing. And I never want to work with another ad agency again. I'm giving you the truth about what's actually happening when that happens. So when you turn that campaign on, you need to understand the amount of time you're going to have to endure to get through this. Now, if you're spending $10 a day, $5 a day, you're really giving Facebook pennies to be able to assimilate data to be able to know, okay, uh, this is the audience that this ad actually belongs to. So you got two choices in this moment when you're doing this, okay? You can either spend more, up the, up, up the cost of that and, and condense that time. So if, it's, if you're spending $5 a day and it takes 60 days to get the results you're looking for, if you spend $100 a day, $500 a day, $1,000 a day, you could do the math and really realize how fast you're going to get the information. You know, it's like that saying, spending more costs less. And I know it's really weird, but it's the truth. So when you're first turning on that ad campaign, it's building the audience. It's trying to figure out, we're trying to figure it out on, on where this ad needs to go. And so you could get really discouraged when you first start and you'll say, oh my God, this isn't, this isn't working. This isn't a thing that's going to work for us. Oh my God, I've spent all this money. Advertising sucks. I don't want to be a part of it. Guys that are jumping on on Instagram, thank you. We're only going to stream this probably for another five or six minutes. You need to go to cislospicerecipe.com to sign up. We're doing this live every week. I'm only doing it to get some people over there. So what happens is, is that they're, 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 they get frustrated. They get angry and they say oh, advertising doesn't work. They give up on it and they never do it again. Social media doesn't work. They give up on it and they never do it again because they lack the fundamental truth of nobody knows that you're there. You have to start with awareness. You have to start with some sort of spend or a boosted post just to start assimilating this audience so that you can go back and market to them harder later on. Okay. So that's really the first thing that a lot of people get wrong is that they think you turn it on and it starts to work. The only time I've ever really seen it work is when you have a, like that fast is when you have a lot of spend to go. Now, our company is like the fast track at this. We know how to make this go quickly to start getting leads within 24 to 48 hours of it turning on. We know how to start sending traffic, qualified traffic that's actually going to start buying a product. I'm giving you some of that data here so that you could do it yourself and you can educate yourself from it, right? So the first point is that there's just no understanding or concept of what it actually takes. They don't understand that boosting doesn't really do much more than build an audience and create awareness. They don't understand or, or like you'd be surprised how many people will say, you know, yeah, I've run ads on Facebook before. And then we go into the back end of their platform and all of a sudden we take a look and it's just like, this guy does not have a business account. They don't have an ad account. What have you been running ads on? Okay. Boosting is great for awareness. Boosting is great for developing your audience. Boosting is great for kind of amassing people. But where you really want to do this is in the business manager. Uh, real quick, Eric asked, what main metrics do you look for at awareness ad campaigns? That's a great question. So the main metrics that I'm looking for and my team looks for when we're doing awareness-based campaigns, there's a few metrics in there. We're looking at cost, number one. So with a video ad, with a video ad, you could, you could get, I don't know, you could probably get views for 0.001 cent, like of a dollar. Uh, and, and, and so we're really looking for what's the cost and how many people are actually working on that. Then we're looking at uh, impressions, which an impression is simply just somebody really just kind of saw it and it scrolled by. 
which is good. I mean, it's fine. They saw it. It popped up, you're, you know, and you probably have seen that when you've gone on your Facebook or your Instagram and you got an ad and then you just went by and then the ad came back again. It's trying to get you to, to engage with that. So we're watching impressions, although that number is not really that important. Uh, the second one we're really interested in is reach. And that's the one where we're seeing, okay, did how many people actually stopped to take a look at this? Okay. Are they actually, did it reach them? Did they stop? Did they watch it? Then we're watching for, if it's a video, we want to know the duration of time that the video is being watched, right? So if you can get it, like, let's say you got a 60 second video. If you can get it above 15 to 20 seconds, it's pretty good. Um, anything below that, you're kind of just hitting and missing and it's not really working. So from an awareness standpoint, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at it from those metrics. And then there's also the point where when you do awareness campaigns, you can market the actual website, okay? You can market and put a link to your website. So then we track link clicks, which is just how many people actually stopped and went through to the website. So based on those metrics, we start to analyze, okay, is this working? Is this the right audience? What do we have to do with this? And without that kind of analysis, without that, that, that I wouldn't say stop, but that attention to detail to come back and say, all right, we really need to analyze this a little more. It's not getting the traction that we want. It's not really responding the way that we want. Then we have to go back and then analyze and adjust. But those are the main metrics that we're looking for from an awareness standpoint. Okay. Now, caveat to this guys on Instagram, if you're just hopping in, this is going to stream for another few minutes, go to cislospicerecipe.com sign up and you can join our private coaching that I do every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Now, I want to talk about a point here, which is companies, businesses, products, services that somebody wants to launch, but they're completely focused on having everything 100% correct, 100% colors are right, the spacing is right, the message is right. The pictures are right. The website is right. The video has the correct music and everything is perfect and it's beautiful and it just makes you sing. There's a fifth, there's a thing about this that I want to dive into right now because this is also why advertising fails. Okay. Because there's two, there's two factors here. First, I'm going to talk about a product that's in development or we're gonna talk about a business that's in development and what should happen at that front, okay? So let's say you come up with a concept or an idea for a product, or you come up with a concept of, of, a, of a new supplement, or you've got this new thing that you wanna promote, or you wanna to try to you know, sell this product, market this product, right? But it's not quite developed yet. What most people want to do, and I guess it's a logical thing, but it's false information. It doesn't make a lot of sense is that they want to wait till everything is completely done to start awareness, to start marketing, to start distributing, to start collecting leads, to start collecting names, to start collecting information. And this is where digital marketing will fail for this business. No matter where you start, if you're ahead, if you're a thriving company, if you've just begun or you're trying to do something new, you're always confronted with the fact that, as I just explained, Facebook, if you've never done ads before, or if you turn them off, you're basically starting back at zero. And you have to get these platforms to, to recognize who the audience actually is. So you got two options. The first option is you could wait till that product is 100% correct, ready. Everything is beautiful. Everything is perfect. Everything is la, 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 la. It's a fairy tale land. And then start marketing, which is where this is going to fail, or... You start marketing while it's in development, while you have a concept, while you have an idea, while you have something in your mind that you want to talk about. Um, Cislo Spice, like this thing that you're all on right now. Thank you to everybody on the private link. Everybody on Instagram, I'm going to shut this off very shortly, cislospicerecipe.com. The thing about this is that I came up with the idea and I started marketing it that day. Although I couldn't do it for two weeks because I had to go do a reality show shoot out in Nashville in Phoenix, Arizona. So I was like, okay, Let's start marketing it now. I wanted people to start showing up now. My editing course is in the final stages of production right now for, for Premiere, and it's not ready yet, but I started promoting that probably three weeks ago. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? Think You got to think of your product like a movie, okay? Hype it like a movie, right? So what happens with a movie? So let's just take The Matrix. The Matrix isn't coming out until what, December? 
and even the Avenger, any movie you think about, they, they launch a trailer like a year in advance. Why do you think they do that? Well, they do that for two reasons. One, to gauge the audience reaction. And then number two, they can start feeding now for the whole year about the film. James Bond is the perfect example. I've got so many damn ads about No Time to Die. It's obnoxious. But the point of the matter is I love James Bond. I'm just saying. The advertising, though, pretty intense. So what I'm talking about here is that they don't wait till that movie is in the movie theater and say, the movie is in the movie theater, go see it now, okay? Or I didn't wait to say, hey, Cicero Spice is ready to go today. Everybody should sign up now. No, 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 no. I started marketing it and I started getting attention. I started getting leads, okay? Because I knew that the day that this was going to launch, the day that it was going to be ready, had I not done this, I wouldn't be able to get anybody in or I wouldn't be able to sell my courses. And you go through the same thing. We were working on a project recently where it was perfection, 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 and a project that should have, you know, there are other people involved in it, but a project that should have taken probably 90 days, if that to complete was stretched out to over a year because it had to be perfect, right? A product that was built, conceived, thought of, ready to go during a crisis in a pandemic that could have solved so many problems was delayed so long that it's not really as relevant anymore, right? So the product gets launched. And then, the, then what happens is, is it's like, oh my God, we spent all this time, all this money, all this energy, getting stressed out, getting worried, beating everybody up, cursing everybody out because the product's not perfect and we got nobody to buy it. I'm saying that from their perspective. And it's just like, well, nobody's buying it. Nobody sees it. Nobody knows what we're doing. Uh, uh, uh. Dude, why don't we get any results? We started advertising. You turned the ads on six days ago. You spent X amount of dollars. What, what, what do you think is going to happen here, right? So, and that's us setting expectations, which we do. But this is the story that happens <clears throat> over and over again in marketing. Digital marketing fails because you think you turn it on and it just works. It doesn't work like that. So if you find yourself in a position right now where you have a concept, you have a product, you have an idea that you want to market, that you want to distribute, that you want to promote right now, do, do not wait till that product is 100% ready to go. Do not wait until you're ready to accept credit cards or registrations for the product. Just start marketing it right now because you're going to be confronted with the problem of, okay, should I confront the problem that nobody knows me now or should I do it when I want to get paid? <clears throat> after, after I just invested hundreds of thousands of dollars into development of this product or supplement or business or idea, or should I do it along the way? And the correct thing to do is to do it along the way. Now, could it work if you launch it when it's ready and you drop like a million bucks on it? Yeah, but still, you still, like it, Facebook isn't going to let you spend a million bucks in a day. It's got to ramp up. It's got to creep up slowly. So even if I tell it, you know, I have to do the math on that. I got to figure out what that is. But let's just say I have, let me pull up my calculator here. Let's just say I have, blah, 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 I got a million dollars. That's a million divided by, yeah, or that's 10 million. I'm sorry. Okay, so a million, let's just say we're going to run a campaign for 90 days divided by 90. It's about $1,011 a day in marketing ad spend. Even when I turn that campaign on to spend that kind of money, it's still going to take some time to ramp up. So even if you have all the money in the world to spend, you still have to, you still have to build the audience. You still have to track it. You still have to change it. So there's this concept of like, oh, turn it on. It goes, we make money. It's not how it works. Okay. Start with your awareness campaigns, boost your posts if you want, but don't expect anything magical out of boosting posts. What you could expect out of boosting posts is the development of an audience that you could go back to later on with your business manager and really crank on it. Guys, I'm going to sign off here on Instagram. Thank you so much. Go to sislospicerecipe.com if you want to get access to this. We do this every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Peace out. Goodbye. Okay, good. So the next thing that we want to dive into now is just us. See, marketing. I'm always thinking about marketing. You got to always think about marketing, okay? I'm sitting here waiting for this to start. And I'm like, okay, I need to market this right now. Let's take a picture of this setup. Good. We're ready to go. All right. Now, so we just talked about the purpose of developing that audience, waiting, what waiting does, where the drawback is, how that falls apart, and where that creates a big problem for you. And people don't want to spend the money or the time to do it because they think it has to be in a perfect state to succeed. It has to be in a certain condition or state to succeed, and that's not entirely true. What really has to happen is do you have the courage enough to believe in the product that you could start marketing it six to eight months ahead of time so that when it is ready to go, it, it, people can just start signing up. 
another real world situation. We got, we got, there's a situation where client is wanting to sell particular packages in a certain industry. And it's like, well, I, you know, the package isn't quite ready to go yet. And this isn't quite ready to go yet. I'm like, good, no problem. Let's just start getting signups right now. Signups for what? Let's just start building your list. Let's just start building people in your file. We got to do it. You're going to, you're going to need to do it later on. Let's just start handling it right now. What's wrong with that? Let's just start right now. And very happy that we did that because now that the product's ready to go, we got a lot of people that are already interested, right? Even when I, when I started my business, I knew during that one year when I had the non-compete, I knew that I couldn't sell what I wanted to sell. So what was I going to do? Well, I just stayed relevant. I did a ton of awareness and I built up this audience. And then when I swear, if you look at my, my income graph for the business, okay, there's like the year before. And then the day of, like it was December 1st, 2019. I won't forget the day. December 1st, 2019, the income has been kind of like floating like this. December 1st happens. It goes whoosh, like literally just like shoots straight up, almost breaks the damn graph. And it's basically stayed up there, gone up and higher, higher and higher. But why? Because when I knew I had the deadline, but I was promoting all the way up to that deadline because I knew that I was going to have a problem at that point. I said, when I go to go, I need to make sure that people were paying attention with me. And digital marketing fails because people don't do this enough, right? They get, they get introverted. They get worried about, oh, it's not perfect. Or they get worried about, oh, man, I, I don't know what to say, or this is wrong, or I'm this, or I'm that. Or maybe you even got a big company where you got a lot of corporate guys that are all sitting around a table, and it takes 12 years for them to make a decision, okay? Because they have to go through their processes. You need to get in there as early as you can, and really start selling them on the idea of like, look, you want to do it right? Let's start teasing it out. Let's start getting, get it hype. Let's get interested on that. Okay. Let's get people interested to where this is going to go. Because when the deadline is to launch, you won't have a problem. You, you invest in the money, invest in the branding, invest in the awareness, 90 days ahead of time, 45 days. If you go even more than that, if you go six months ahead of time, even better, because you're just positioning yourself for a more effective result. You're positioning yourself for further expansion and where this thing needs to go. And going right for the kill, you know, when it when when it when when it starts is just not gonna it's not gonna work. You know, you have this expectation. You're like, okay, I just spent five thousand dollars in ads. I got nothing. Great. You spent five thousand dollars to reach X amount of people that had no idea you existed before. You can't look at it as a loss. Advertising dollars spent is money you cannot miss. You cannot miss this money. You cannot think about this money as a lifeline. You, yes, do you want to track ROIs? Do you want to do all that stuff or turn on ad spend? Sure. But the companies that only focus on that, it's so mechanical. It's so down here and so small. The guys that get somebody out in front that spend the money that they need to spend, they win. You look at, look at, I guarantee you, go look at any successful company, anyone that's su super successful, just ask them how much they spent in ads. Okay. Just ask them. I'll give you McDonald's. Okay. Last year spent, uh, I think they spent about $236 million on advertising total for the year. Do you think every single dollar of that ad spend yielded in money back for them? Probably not. It's a lot of cheeseburgers, man. It's a lot of McFlurries, you know, but they get it. They, they get the control. I'll tell you a story. I went to China mm, when I was 20, how old was I? 22, 22 years old. And I, you know, I went to Shanghai and Beijing and all these cool places, but then we traveled really far South and we went to this town in the middle of nowhere, like nowhere, like, like would the, you, this is, this is weird. Like, you know, it's just rundown houses, all this kind of stuff. And we're walking through the rice fields, the rice fields out there, just walking. Actually, we were on, no, yeah, we were walking. And what did we see? No major civilization, no major population, no major anything was a damn McDonald's sign. I'm talking rice fields, bright red, golden arches. And I'm like, wow, okay. The, it was like 150 miles away is like where McDonald's was. Do you think McDonald's is calculating the ROI off of that sign in the middle of the rice 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 fields they're not they're not but they're there see there's a the difference they're there digital marketing fails when you when you transition from being there to mechanical i need my money to work the second you come out of this and you go to this is where all the problems begin now 
is it is it logical to spend ten thousand dollars over a period of time over every single month and not see results? Not really. That's not logical. I agree with you on that. However, 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 if you're not spending that kind of money at all, you won't know what you need to pivot. And when you work with an ethical advertising company, or if you're managing your ad campaigns, if it's not working, change it, learn about it, adjust it. And we're going to go through all this in later Cisco Spice episodes, but I'm just giving you the concept here because there's a lot of false information about there about why, you know, what digital marketing really is and why it doesn't work sometimes. And that's what we're talking about. We're having a conversation with my new microphone. It's awesome. Good. So now let's move on to the next thing. Not, uh, not nurturing and providing information that is tactical and practical and mixing in personal, personal lifestyle and experience. One caveat on, the, on, on one point on this before we go to this point. When should you check your ad campaigns? Like when should you change it? Typically, I give it two weeks. Like if I make a change, then I give it two weeks. Uh, sometimes it might be a week, depending on how much we're spending. That's giving us more data, but let it run, like get the data, get the information and then go back and take a look at it. But don't be like six days and start freaking out. Okay. Give it some time because it does work when it gets through. Just wanted to give you that point there. All right. Next thing, uh, not nurturing, providing information that's tactical and practical. Okay. So here's my 90, 10 rule. People will be like, 90, 80, 20, Rob, 80, 20, Rob. I'm like, yeah, okay. So I would say that, you know, 90% of marketing, 90% of marketing is more personalized, experience-based, uh, not so, it's not an ad. It's more just a educational communication that's personalized from you, mixed in with your own personal life and things that you do during that time. The other 10% is like that hard sell, that hard ass. A lot of people today will say, okay, well, we want a soft sell we want to soft advertise. We want to kind of disguise it as an ad. And there's a time and a place for that. And I agree with that. But if you never get in there and start really pitching and asking for the sale at some point where it's like, okay, Robert Sislow has a course. It's a marketing course that was $400 and now it's $99. You should go buy it or let us help you with your advertising and marketing campaigns. Like if I don't ever ask for that, you know, if I don't ask for that and tell you where to go, I'm never going to get the business. So I don't know how many of you guys have actually done sales like phone sales or person to person sales. I've spent I mean, I've been doing it for quite a number of years. And if you just don't ask for the business, you don't get the business, right? You can do everything else on the call. But the most important, the 10% that actually makes you the money is the ask for the business. And what advertisers try to do is they try to go into this. I'm never going to ask for the sale. People should just do it themselves and figure it out. And that's not a true approach. Okay. At one point, at one point, you have to turn around. You have to be aggressive. Okay. After periods of awareness and education and tactical information and all this stuff, ask people for money. Ask them for it. You have to ask them for it. Okay, are you ready to buy now? I just delivered to you two hours, three hours worth of content over a period of 30, 60 days. Uh, are you going to buy it? You want to be a part of it? You want to change what you're doing? You keep tuning in. Let's do something. Here's where you can buy it. It's 39 bucks, 49 bucks, $3,500, 10000 Like literally you have to ask them. But you do not ask them first, okay? You don't want to betray that. You don't want to betray that kind of trust there. So what you want to do is you want to educate with tactical information, okay? 90% of the time, education, tactical information, your personal life. Spend a lot of time on that. You know, get lightly touch it and say, okay, well, maybe you can, you go to our website if you have more questions, check this out. And then at one point, you know, you got to get in there and you got to pitch, okay? You, you do have to do it. Um, it's not a matter of just like, yes, look at this property that I have. I'm a realtor agent and look at this. This is a listing. What is real estate? I've always said, man, if, if I was going to come back, okay. And I could retain the knowledge that I have about advertising and marketing. I would do real estate because I would slay it because some of the realtors out there, they post a picture of a listing and it's just like, what does that communicate to me? Like, why would I pay attention to that? Okay. Now, Realtors that actually win, I'll tell you, you know, how I got this apartment that I'm in or this building that I moved into. There's a realtor who ran an ad that showed me pictures and a walkthrough and him talking about it and he's passionate about it and he's excited about it. And he marketed it, you know, three miles around where we are. And I lived across the street. I saw the ad. I went across the street. I'm like, oh my God, I want to live in this building. It's amazing. He was smart. 
because he gave me tactical providing information, personal information that I was like, I could walk across the street and go look at this. Right. So where digital marketing fails is that they don't ask, you don't, you don't get, you don't ask for people to buy after you've given them enough information where you're just kind of like sitting there and you're like, man, I've been so helpful and I've, and I've done such a good job and I've been in great communication and I've shown them everything they need to know. And man, I'm just so good at this. And I love talking to people, but you never ask them to give you the credit card. You never ask them to go here and buy it. Okay. At one point you got to do it and it's uncomfortable. It's a little weird at first. You might think, Oh man, people think that I'm pitching too hard uh, in my ads and it quite the contrary. You know, one of the discoveries that I've had over the years is that most people are looking for the opportunity, like they want more, you know, it's like you want to do it. Like, have you ever supported a show or a band or an influencer on YouTube? And then they came out and they're like, we got t-shirts. Uh, we've got this, we got that. And you're like, I just want to buy it because I like the guy, you know, I'm guilty of that. I've done it. I want to buy it just because I want to be more connected. I want to see what else they have. And so whatever, I'm sorry, I keep hitting that. And so whatever industry you're in, Give them an opportunity to buy other products, right? But ask them to do it. Continue to provide that high-level education, but not asking them to actually purchase is a huge marketing fail, right? And an advertising agency that isn't willing to get in there and say to you, hey, okay, we think we need to ask them to buy now. Like, if they're not going to say that to you, don't work with them because they're not, it's something else. I'm not sure what it is. If you're only going for awareness, then only go for awareness. If you really want to make sales, go for awareness first, build the education, then start pounding on them for, 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 for the purchase of your products, your supplements, your services, whatever that might be, construction, roofing, whatever it is, you know, it, it's got to happen at some point. Now, the thing that you also need to understand about this is that, you know, the 10% of that time has to be really strong. So why marketing fails? Another reason is that there's just not enough connection between you and the potential people that exist, right? So what do I mean by that? We're going to dive into that right now. So if I was going to talk to a business owner that makes 30, 40, 50, $100 million a year, that's a certain conversation, okay? That's just a different conversation than a guy that made $250,000, $60,000 last year. They're just two totally different realities, okay? And I think most people know this, like when you're in the presence of someone that's very powerful, when you're in the presence of a very powerful entrepreneur, the conversation's just different. When you're kind of at, you know, working with people that are around you at the same level, it's a different conversation. What fails to happen is the advertisements and the videos and the messaging and the promotion that goes out doesn't match those different areas. You usually come up with like one script, one piece of copy, and then you rely on that one piece of copy for your marketing or your ad campaigns or your posting and all of that stuff. Because you're like, I'm just marketing. I'm spending money. Facebook should just give me money. Like it's, a, it's an ATM machine. I see these other guys doing it. They always roll up in their, in, in, in their fancy cars and stuff telling me to buy their course. And if they learn this, they'll do this. Da, 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 blah, 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 blah. Truth of the matter is, though, is that what we're really talking about here is just we're not we're not we're not speaking to the people that need to be spoken to the way that they need to be spoken to. Does that make sense? Did I just say that correctly? I think I did. Basically, we're not communicating to the people at the level that they're at. That's really what it is. OK, a guy making 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollars a year is a different viewpoint, different realities, got different problems, got different communication. They're, they're, everything is different from the guy that's making one hundred thousand dollars. What I learned to do. And what we implement with our clients is we know who we're talking to. And not only that, if we have a client or we're working with a business that can potentially work with other types of individuals or other types of people, we make sure that we have ads and campaigns and marketing assets and videos and graphics and pictures and email campaigns that speak to all those people. Now, that, now if you really think about that, that's quite a lot of work. You know, it's not just about, okay, I'm, I'm giving you the personal viewpoint that I have, but I'm also taking the time to really research and create that content for those individuals, right? So if I have a product that sells for $100, that's a different conversation than a product that sells for $100,000. I'm in the process right now on working on the million dollar package. We are building a million dollar Cislo Ventures package. It's literally called the million dollar package. Okay, that conversation is a very good, it's a very different conversation 
than my $5,000, $10,000, $1,500 package, right? But I know, I know that there's somebody out there, if they came to me and were like, I got a million bucks, what can you do? I need to know what the answer to that question is going to be. So there's a caveat of like, I have to understand the audience, not from also their demographic data, which is what most marketers will tell you. You know, they'll say, well, you know, how well do you understand your niche? How well do you understand the customer? How well do you understand, you know, what their interests are or, or whatever that is, their demographic data? We got to go a little bit further than that. We have to really realize what's the reality of this person? What, what, what do they see every day? What's their life every day? What's that life like? You know, what, what problems do you have at a seven figure business versus a six figure business? What problems do you have at a high seven figures? I'm sorry, a, a high six figure business versus I just made six figures. It's just different points, right? So if you have a product or a service that you know can span that gap and really talk to every type of individual, you also have to be able to adjust to that conversation. Salespeople do it, I think, in sales, but marketing, I don't see it happen. I really don't. What you see is like, check out my winning funnel campaigns. Check out my winning this. Check out my winning that. And I'm going to share with you the top seven strategies of how to mechanically do something, but I'm not going to show you how to really connect with people at where they are at in their life, where they are at financially, where they are at and what it is that they do from the day-to-day -day experience that they have. And that right there, if we go back to identity and differentiation, which we had last episode, okay, that positions you in a whole new strata because you can have conversations with kings and you can have conversations with everyone. You can go talk to a king, you can market to a king, a queen, whatever, and then you can come back and then you can talk to everyone. And it, that that's an actual skill, I think, as a marketer, as someone that takes it to social media and is willing to invest the time and the strategy to go write those types of pieces of content, to be fun, exciting, and then be conservative when they have to be conservative. Like, I think that's a good thing because it shows that you have the ability to communicate and be able to get your services and your products out in front of people that maybe ordinarily would never pay attention to you. So you have to deliberately go out of your way to find what those conversations would be and then ask yourself, what would this person want to know in relation to the product that I have? And what am I going to write? What am I going to say? What, what kind of video am I going to make that's going to work in, to get in front of this person, to get that person's attention, okay? Because why marketing fails is that that, what I just told you, does not take place. It just doesn't. It sounds like it kind of does like, yeah, well, we know the audience, they spend this, they spend that. But if you really get into the nitty gritty of the campaign, you know, when you look at what those campaigns are, that, 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 that differentiation is just not missing from campaign to campaign. And if you've never run ads before, when I say campaign, think about a campaign like a big box, okay? Here's our campaign to attract people to, I don't know, uh, to buy cars, to buy Ford cars, okay? Here's our campaign. Within that campaign on social media, you have, you have little ads, you have multiple ads. You could have 10, 12, some campaigns we run have anywhere from 12 to 15 types of ads for just one campaign, right? And those different levels are exactly what we're talking about. Okay, we're serving it, we're changing the copy, we're changing the videos a little bit, we're changing that message so that it does reach that person that we're getting in front of. Okay. And, and, and at agencies today, they don't do that. They're like, yeah, Hey, Hey, how you doing, man? Uh, I will run ads for you and I'll post on social media for you. And you're like, okay, great. I'll do it. And then 90 day go by and you're like, Hey man, this isn't working. And then you blow up and you lose your mind and you just, you hate, you hate advertising across the planet because what I'm telling you here, nobody else is going to tell you about when, when we onboard a client. Okay. Every client we onboard, I tell them, this is what we're going to do. No matter how much money they give us, no matter how much money they have to spend on their ads, whatever that is, this is what we go through. It's standard procedure for advertising. And this is what we get it in. And I'm sharing that with you because it needs to be there. Okay. That ability to bridge that gap, that ability to not just focus on one winning piece of content, ad, copy, whatever, you need to have multiple. Now, the other reason why you want to have multiple is because this will also help you fast track who your audience is that you should dial in. 
Now, let's say we're going along the line and we're, we're talking to everybody and everything's going good. And we start to notice that between this, this particular area does really well. So maybe we'll inject some more funds into that. So now we're thinking strategically, right? Now we're looking at it from the viewpoint, okay, guys that make north of $5 million a year tend to like this a little bit more. So let's put some more money behind this campaign. And now we're getting into allocation of ad spend. Okay, people will go in there and they'll just, they'll, they'll dump all the money into one campaign versus let's spread some of that money out where it needs to go and really see which one's gonna start to perform and then start doubling down and really get a fire hose to work. Then we build another fire hose through the mechanics of what I'm talking about here. That goal, that creation, that walkthrough, that analysis is that the lack of is why marketing wouldn't succeed for people. And we see it time and time again. People will just be like, man, Rob, you know, I, I'm just struggling. Like I've tried so many different agencies. And I said, well, have you done this? And they're like, no, we've never done that. And I'm like, well, let's try it. And then all of a sudden it turns around. Okay, now let's talk about something else. Now that we're moving on, is this good stuff? Tell me in comments. If you guys have questions, drop it in comments. If you like what I'm talking about, please let me know in, in, in the chat. If the chat is actually located um, in the bottom of that screen there. So you can definitely let me know if you have questions, if you're tracking along. It's very insightful stuff, which is really just something that we're trying to you know, impart to you that I don't see anybody talking about, right? So moving on. Moving on from there is, is really the idea of, you know, we're, we're spending money, we're, we're not spending enough, or we're spending too much, but we're not allocating that money in a certain way. And, and really, the big thing is just you have to be able to know, in addition to the people that you're talking to, you have to be able to look at, okay, which one of the products and services belong in front of these people? Okay. Some people try to like spray and pray where they just say, I've got all this stuff. I got this, I got this, I got this, I got this. Now I do that on Instagram a little bit, but when I'm running ad campaigns, I'm very much direct, very much like, okay, this product is going to work good for this person at this place. This is where it needs to go. This is how we're going to break this down. This is how this is going to get in front of somebody. So it's just logical, right? Like somebody that's looking to scale, their brand isn't probably going to buy the creativity course that I have. They're probably going to want to buy the social media marketing course that goes over that stuff. Or somebody that already has a brand but is looking to scale it may bump themselves up to a larger package that I have that's going to really expand them out further into the marketplace, right? So there's that ability to know which products go where. And what some people will do is they'll just say, well, I think this product will work for marketing. I think it's kind of like a no best attitude. It's like, I know best what product I think is going to work here. But the data, it's funny because every time that that's ever happened, it always never worked uh, where, where that kind of inverted. So you got to kind of, you have to be able to drop that I know best thing and really be willing to just experience and move through what product is actually going to work. Because nine times out of 10, the products that work are not the products we think are going to work. You know, it's like, oh, wow, that product's really selling. I didn't think that that was going to be a thing, but that's what people want right now. So having a pulse on that. Remember last week, having a pulse on the industry is something that's super important because your products play a role into that. And then you allocate your advertising spend accordingly, right? So, so you want to play with that and really explore, okay, where should this product go? Should it go here? Is this audience for that? Da, 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 da. And really do the research, okay? Not doing the work, and just handing it off and turning it on autopilot and monitoring that campaign and creating more content to that campaign uh, is gonna not work out. It's just not gonna work. So next thing, this is probably the most important thing. And I don't know why anybody does, they, they, they just don't do this, but it's funny. I'm gonna take a sip of Coke Zero here. Mm. I'm not paid for that product placement. I just like Coke Zero. Anyway, so the thing is, Salespeople, entrepreneurs, business owners, solopreneurs, okay? You know the product. You know your product, right? You know what you're talking about. You know what you would say on the phone if somebody asked you question X, you would have an answer to question X. Uh, you know if somebody's being difficult, uh, how to communicate to that difficult person uh, to be able to get them over whatever objection that might be to sell them the product and get them to sign up. Uh, if somebody is unsure in that sales process, you get in there and you say, all right, well, what are you unsure about? I'm unsure about this. And you grab them by the hand 
and you walk them through the process all the way down so that you could sell the deal, right? You do it. If you're not doing it, you should be doing it. Uh, but that's where it needs to be. I'm going to tell you a story about an automotive trainer that we worked with who we assisted. Okay. And not that automotive trainer, a different automotive trainer, uh, had a little bit of a different style and we were working with him. So what ended up happening was, is that he was running ads on social media. Uh, he had a whole academy, you know, he had a place where people could come in and get trained in automotive as an automotive sales professional. And then he would take them once they passed that training and place them into an, a sales job at one of the local automotive dealerships. He's up in Fort Lauderdale. So there's a lot of automotive dealerships around there. And even in Miami, right? That's pretty cool. Like if you think about it, oh, go to school to learn how to sell. And then I will place you in a job. I will get you a job so you can start making money. Problem was... When you look at his content and what he was showing online, he's talking about objections and he's talking about handling objections and he's talking about uh, follow up and, you know, the basic sales lingo that we know about. And I, and, and I, you know, he contacts me out of the blue and we, we, we had a conversation. So I went up to his office and I sit down with him like, like I'm sitting with you now. He's, he's, he's over there. He's sitting right across from me. And um, I say, so what's wrong? What's the problem? Well, you know, I do all this social media and I market and I promote and we spend a lot of money and we're not getting sales and we're not getting, you know, I'm spending about 10 grand a month in ads and we're not getting signups and it's just not working. So I don't know how you're going to help me because every person that I bring in here, you know, they'll tell me, they'll be like, oh yeah, we're going to change this. We're going to get you leads. We're going to show you how this is going to go, blah, 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 the usual suspected advertising story. And I say to him, okay, good. Let me ask you a question. What do you say in your sales process? Tell me what happens when you get on the phone with somebody. Well, I, you know, I, I, we, we walk them through every single angle, through every single aspect. We show them how this program is different and the care and the one-on-one -on -one time that they get and the, the, the in-house training and the, the testing and the, the drilling and, 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 the, and, and the rehabbing of all the information that they need to know. And it's just like, you know, we really cultivate them over time. It's not an online program. It's like you are here and we are grinding you to become a machine. And we want to take people that never had any experience in sales, that want to have a career in automotive sales, that want to do better. They're already in existing, you know, they're already in automotive sales and they want to do better. And we really cultivate them like we, and we graduate them and we get them jobs and they start earning $250,000, $300,000 a year uh, when they go through our program, like they're totally certified and all the dealerships around us, they, they know they, they like us because we give them good salespeople, you know, and we really take that time. And, you know, there is a training aspect to it where they go through a curriculum and there's all these different videos that we have that we walk them through. But I also personally walk through them because I want them to know that I care. By the way, I still haven't asked another question. This is him talking the whole time. One question, bleh, vomit, just bleh, all over. This is what I love this stuff because this is what I'm looking for. So he's still going and he's saying all these great things about how he brings people through the process and how he does this and how he does that. And it sounds wonderful. It sounds beautiful. And I say to him, I, I don't even, I think he just talks for 20 minutes straight out, off that one question. And I'm like, uh-huh, mm-hmm, uh-huh, mm-hmm. Oh, interesting, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, keeps going. And I say to him, I go, all right, um, so why is none of this in your marketing? And I swear the guy's face went from like, I'm so good to like, I'm an idiot, you know, because it, it's so simple. I'm like, well, where is this? Your marketing is all about solving objections in sales, but but I get that's what you're teaching, but that's not what this program is. And there's no differentiating factor between you and this already thriving automotive sales trainer or all of these automotive salespeople or people who are teaching sales in general. It's all just go to this conference seminar and blah. You're doing something really unique. It's a lot more intimate. And not only that, they get a certificate and they get a job. Like you give them a job. It's not, I'm teaching you sales. It's I'm teaching you sales one-on-one, -on -one, cultivating this relationship with you. And then I'm getting you a job. And he's like, oh my God, I never even thought about that. And I'm like, good. Here's the package. Here's how much it's going to cost and what we're going to do. Let's start. Give me a credit card. Boom. 
but I mean, that's not, that, that's really what happened. It was actually quite interesting. Um, but, but the point was, is that here's a guy who's got this amazing thing. You might have this amazing product. You may communicate on the phone in a specific way and you walk people through this. But when it comes to social media posting, when it comes to running Facebook ads, when it comes to running Google ads, you completely forget all that and you change it because some other person is telling you these are the winning secrets that have to go. And you bring none of this solution that you had over here. Sorry, you bring none of the solution that you had over here into your advertising and marketing. And that is a huge failure, failure to launch an advertising that we see over and over again. There's no transition of that sales process into marketing. The fact-finding questions, good. You could do a whole ad campaign on fact-finding questions and do a survey out of that, get people to engage with you, call them up and sell them. Okay, uh, how you handle objections. Like I'm looking for every objection I can find in the advertising world because I go make video content on it and I market the hell out of it. And then by the time people come around and they want to talk to me, it's already warmed up. They're like, yeah, this guy knows what he's talking about because I do, right? Oh, I've had bad experiences with advertising. I've had bad experience with ad agencies. I did a video called the truth about bad advertising experiences. And that brings me money. It's the same thing here. What is it in your business, in your industry that you have that you do on the phone or when you talk to whoever, when you do your pitches and stuff, are you translating that over to your marketing? Are you translating that over to your Facebook ads? Are you translating that over to any type of post that you're doing? Or are you just kind of like doing what this guy did, which is like, I'm going to show you automotive sales. Here's one thing you need to know about handling a money objection. Here is this type of clothes you need to know. We've heard that enough. Why I'm going to buy is because of these other things that you have, which is actually, in my opinion, way more important. So I'll tell you what happened after. So we, so we brought them on and we, we redid all this stuff. <clears throat> we launched the campaign. We did organic social posts. And he got like that day, he got like 12 signups from an organic post, we didn't even start running ads yet. And then it steadily grew from there once we got the ads going. But just look at the logic of that. And, and this is something that a lot of people miss is that they, they, they have the sales process, which is designed to get you a deal, by the way, which is designed to get somebody to buy, by the way. Why would you not bring that over here? We've got, I mean, I've built campaigns before where it was, this is the fact finding campaign. And then once they got through this campaign, then I retargeted them meaning I serve them another ad because at the beginning of this call, remember I said that at the beginning, it builds an audience. So I built the audience with the fact finding campaign. Then I came back and I told them about, okay, here's some objections and frequently things that we get run into. Then we came back on a third level again. And we said, okay, good. This is where you can actually take this. And this is what's unique. And then that 10% comes in at the bottom, man, you see the magic that's happening, how I just brought everything together. I'm like impressed with myself. And that 10% is, okay, good. You're ready to buy. Let's do it. Let's buy it right now. And then they buy. That right there is a full-fledged advertising campaign. That is a full-fledged, correct social advertising, distribution, lead generation, product campaign. Okay? And when you're not doing that and you're relying on one thing, okay, what we're talking about here is being able to get in front of and different angles and do it like this because you do it on the phones already. So you should be doing it. You should be doing it no matter what. Okay. Take the sales process, bring it in here, utilize it, do your deal with it and watch what's going to happen on that. All right. So that's everything that I wanted to cover for you guys today. I'm going to open it up to questions. I see we do have one Q and a there. Um, I hope that that, that's, that, that was like, that's like a PhD in marketing theory right there. Like that, I, I don't know anybody that talks about that. The, the people go branding, 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 Facebook ads, Facebook ads, Facebook ads. But we're talking about the stuff that actually makes sense that we implement every day with our clients nonstop. So I'm going to take a look. If you guys have questions, uh, you could drop it in chat. You could drop it in the Q&A, but let me pop this up here. Uh, it says, awesome. If you must choose only one platform, which one would you choose to market? I mean, that's kind of a tough question to answer, but I'll say that, you know, the, the way that I would do this is I would probably start with Facebook because it's the fastest platform to give you data back. Uh, and it's got a lot of controls. Like if you have a business page, it's the fastest one that you can come back to and collect data quickly. Usually what we do 
with our clients is we will launch them on Facebook and Instagram. And once we kind of let it run a little bit, we'll see if we need to transition them anywhere else like Google AdWords um, or YouTube advertising. But there's, there's definitely situations where <clears throat> we've, launched page, we, we've launched people directly on Google and YouTube. You know, when Facebook went down and Instagram went down two days ago and the world had a gigantic panic attack and, you know, lost their minds and jumped to Twitter, you know, I, I emailed all my clients and I told them, hey, look, Facebook and Instagram are down, letting you know that we're monitoring your situation. No ads are currently running right now. There are no ads serving. There is no social media. Blah, 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 blah. There is no social media posting that's taking place right now. Um, but what we are going to do is, is if this isn't fixed by tomorrow, we're going to move everybody free of charge over to Google and YouTube ads. You know, we'll just do it. Uh, some guys were already there, so they were okay. But, but being able to start on Facebook, I think is a very positive thing. Okay. Johnny's asking me, is it better to have entertainment as an ad or educational? You know, that depends. I would say if you can go, if you can blend both of those things together, you're, you're like a ninja, you're like a samurai of advertising, but I always try to lean a little bit more on the entertainment side, just a touch. Like I always try to drop a, da a dash of entertainment into whatever I'm doing. Educational is good for like your second and third campaigns. You know, like I attract your attention and you're interested and you're there, but I'm going to give you some information now, but I, I would definitely recommend if you could sprinkle some touches of entertainment, it goes a long way. People, people respond better to entertainment. It just works. Uh, Eric, do you utilize Facebook splits test and automated ad features or do all that yourself over multiple different ad types? So what's going on with Facebook right now? So let me tell you what a split test is. Facebook allows you to test different creatives and ad campaigns and audiences or, and just to see which one's going to perform better. So you can run both simultaneously and you get real time data and it tells you It'll let you know, be like, this one's working. Good. This is the one, this is the campaign we're going to use. Okay. That's the split test. Um, or you can also do that manually if you want. Um, and then there's also something called, uh, there's, there's, it's, um, it's automated. It's an automated ad feature on the back, um, on the back end of Facebook, where Facebook will just set up the ad and based on some of the information that you give it, it will determine where it thinks uh, the audience is and who it should be served to. And then there is your manual based kind of ad where you're doing it all yourself and figuring it out and monitoring it. Okay. It's called ABO, which is, a, I think it's called automate automatic based auto auto based op optimization. And then CBO, which is cost based optimization. Um, I might've, I may have butchered that. Uh, but, but basically one of them is automated. Facebook's doing it for you and figuring everything out. And then the other one is cost-based where you're doing it yourself and you're monitor, monitoring it uh, step by step. If you have, if you have more money to spend, I would do automated. Uh, it is pretty good. Like what they've done recently is pretty good. You go in there and you check it out. Um, and let it run and kind of do its thing. If you're trying to do a smaller ad campaign, say maybe $5 a day, $250 a month, like something extremely small, you're going to probably want to do it manually and do a cost-based optimization so that you have more control over it. Um, but it depends. So really what determines that for us is how much ad spend we have and then how narrow the, the audience is. Like if we know we need to get to a very narrow audience, we will not do automatic. Like we're going to do it cost-based. We want that much control. Daniel's asking for small business, what would be a minimum daily spend for Facebook ads? I mean, realistically, like we've got, amazingly, we've had campaigns that were as small as $5 a day and they were yielding, uh, I would say anywhere from 10 leads to 12 leads a week, but that took a little bit of time. Um, hold on one second. My, my, my camera just, uh, my battery died. So I'm just going to switch the battery one sec. So we should be back.
There we go. Fix that. Um, so, so we've had campaigns that basically, you know, $5 a day, if you're doing lead gen should be okay. But if you can get above 10, that would be good. So like $10 a day is going to be, you know, like 330 bucks. I usually recommend $500, like absolute bare bones, minimum ad campaign spend 500 bucks. That's about $13 a day, maybe a little bit less, but if you can go more than that, that's good. But minimum would be about 13, 13 bucks a day. So that's $500 a month in ad spend. Anything above that is really, you know, recommended. Now, if you're trying to sell a product, like if you're trying to sell a, uh, if you're trying to sell a, a, uh, like a, like a supplement or a physical product or something like that, uh, you're going to need a little bit more ad spend because it's good. It's just the conversion to get a product sold is so high. Um, you're going to need to make sure that you have a little bit more, probably minimum 20 to 25, maybe $30 a day just on the product campaign ad. Um, but there's a difference. Leads are a little bit more easier to get than a product that you're asking somebody to purchase. These are great questions, guys. I really appreciate that. What else? Anybody else have any other questions? Wow, we really, we really cranked tonight. We're over an hour. Whoo, that's good. I really like talking about this stuff, though. It's helpful. Okay, good. All right. Well, I think that covers everything. If nobody else has any other questions, uh, really, you know what? Thanks again for hopping in. Okay, creative. If you want to learn creativity, sysloventures.com forward slash creativity. It's $29. If you want to learn graphic design to design your own graphics to have me show you how we build social advertising banners, graphics that convert and teach you Photoshop, the bare bones Photoshop, it's $79. It's four hours of training. Go buy it. Okay. Sislowventures.com forward slash graphics with an S. Okay. It's 79 bucks. It'll give you everything you need to know to build your own creative graphics for Instagram story for your Facebook page, for email campaigns. Like I'll show you how to do it all, okay? And then we have our editing course coming out uh, as well. So had to pitch a little bit, you know? Yeah, I, I told you, you gotta do the 10%. 90% value, 10% pitch, all right? So check it out. If you haven't gotten it yet, check it out. Otherwise, I will see you all next Wednesday at seven o'clock. And thank you so much. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the video today. Listen, I got a couple things I wanna share with you. If you want help with promotion and marketing training on how to build a brand, transform your brand, you can go to cislowventures.com forward slash secrets revealed. It's a 200 course program online that gives you everything from starting with nothing all the way up to taking you to advertising. And whatever questions you might have, it's very simple, very short, very effective, gets you going. Number two. If you need any help with anything digital, video production, web design, graphic design, maybe you need printers, maybe you need flyers, maybe you need graphics, social media posting, Facebook ads, Google ads, YouTube ads, LinkedIn posting, Twitter posting, video production, consulting, training, any of those items, we can help you with that. You can just go to cislowventures.com, sign up there, Go to the branding page, check out the webinar that I have, take a look at all that. And then lastly, if you're a high-end corporate client, one that's spending north of $60,000 a month in advertising spend, you can go to cislospice.com and we have special corporate enterprise pricing for you just over there and everything digital, all right? So if you need anything, all the links are below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.